How's it going everybody? I'm Steve and welcome back to my channel. So tonight I'm actually taking part of a community challenge. There's a YouTube channel called Born to be Rad and Garrett actually runs that channel. And I've actually met him twice now on, on live streams through Mega Mike the Movie Man. And they're doing a, like a challenge, it's called Nine Movies That Scared Us. And he's basically talking about movies that we, we loved when we were kids that really scared us. And um, as far as this, I, I've, got, I've got nine titles, I've got them ranked. Not, they're not ranked based on scares, they're, they're ranked on based on, on movies that I like the most, you know, from least to most. But I actually really like all these movies, but just kind of go, going in order, that, I, that the ones I like to watch the most. Uh, but uh, as far as the, the titles that I didn't, did not include, the uh, original Dawn of the Dead, uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, uh, The Omen, and The Exorcist. Uh, and that's the only re reason why I didn't include those is because I didn't see those movies until the 90s when I was a little bit older and you know, like a young adult. So I, I just I did the ones that I that I that I liked when I was a kid. Like 1980, I, I was uh, I was seven years old in 1980. So you know the the early 80s were definitely the, the period when I I started kind of watching some horror movies. A lot of the movies I watched were like um, on network TV. You know b back then we didn't have like VHS tapes and we didn't have a lot of people didn't have v VCRs. Um, so, so I'm gonna get right into it here um, at uh, number nine. This is uh, the first one out of this franchise that I'd ever seen. It's a uh, Friday the 13th Part 3 in 3D. And the reason why, I think it was this 1982, I would've been nine at the time. You know, it, it basically, 3D effects, I, I don't, don't know if I'd ever seen a 3D movie before. And it's, it, it's kind of scary in a lot of ways because uh, th this is in 2D, I think, I think you can watch this in 3D, but I, I don't have a 3D TV or player. But you know, like, uh, this is when Jason first got his mask, you know, and he, he had, he'd do something like a machete and he'd kind of point at the camera and it looked much scarier than if you watch it on 2D, it, it just doesn't look very scary <laughs> necessarily, but I, I still like that movie. And I, I really like part four is probably my favorite out of the franchise, but this is like the first one when I was you know younger and, uh, and the one that scared me the most. So I, that's why I have it at number nine. At number eight, I have My Bloody Valentine. This one, this is another one that I watched on network TV a lot, you know, when they have commercials, you know, that, that kind of stuff. It kind of makes it a little more scary, I think, in some ways, when, when, they, when you have a commercial, when you kind of kind of ends on sort of a cliffhanger, cliffhanger before they go to commercial. And then you kind of wonder, you know, during that commercial break, what's, what's going to happen when, you know, if you, if you haven't seen the movie before, you know, kind of what, what's going to happen next, you know. It's, it's, it kind of makes it a little, little more scary, even though I, obviously I prefer not to watch movies with, with commercials in them, even though I, I can watch Tubi. Um, and I saw the, actually the uh, remake of this just on Friday night uh, from 2009, and that was in 3D, and uh, or originally it was in 3D. This was in 2D, but you, you could definitely see where the 3D was kind of there. And I, I gave that movie like two two stars out of five. You know, I, I like the cast in it, but but to me the original is the one that I'm going to continue watching because it's it's much better than than that, than that, that remake. At number seven, this this one is a. Uh, Three out of uh, you know, three movies I have from John Carpenter on my list, and I was actually going to put four originally, and I, I, I subtracted one off. But the movie is The Fog. You know, it has uh, Jamie Lee Curtis, Adrian Barbeau. You know, it was a Tom Atkins, I think, is in it. Uh, I, I probably I saw this sometime last year, I think, uh, the last time. But I've watched it several times. I remember my aunt and uncle uh, lived in an apartment, and they had HBO back then. And this is back in the '80s. I, the neighborhood I, I grew up in actually didn't have you know cable until 1984, the neighborhood was not wired for cable. So, so a lot of people that lived in apartments back then got, got HBO and those, those kind of premium channels because it, usually the apartment complexes usually were wired for cable way before the, like a lot, a lot of the neighborhoods were. So you know, cable was, it was pretty new uh, you know, in the Midwest anyway. I, I live in Indianapolis, so it was, it was new at the time. It, cable was like something that started in like New York and you know, wealthier people had it at the time. So, but yeah, the, the fog, uh, it's something that does, doesn't scare me as much now. But it's it's more nostalgia than anything, and I, I you know obviously John Carpenter, huge fan of him. So I've got this at number seven, and number six. This one was uh, written written by Stephen King. This was a TV movie I think from 1979, I believe. And I used to watch uh, this. Is another one I watched on network TV all the time. But it's Salem's Lot. This one was a, a, a like a three hour. It was like a I think a two parter TV TV show that that uh, I think they showed it in theaters too at one point, but. I remember when I, I used to have this on DVD, and it was just like the 90-minute version. So there's so much I, I I missed out of the movie, especially the ending. It was 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 all cut out of the DVD version of it, the the edited version. 
So uh, I was glad when, once this, this got re-released on Blu-ray, I, I was happy to, to get it. And I actually, I actually met the guy that actually did, did the artwork on this. He's a, he does a lot of artwork for, for different studios. And uh, I met him, he was at like a friend's house, uh, one, well, like at a party one, one night. And um, so it, yeah, he, he showed me how, how he designed that. And, and so when I, that, that's how I knew that this movie was getting released on Blu-ray. So really excited about that. So when I sat with David, Sto David Soul as the, uh, the main star of the movie. He was, he was popular back in the 70s. So yeah, so Salem's Lot, I got this there. At number five, this one was uh, directed by Toby Hooper, uh, and executive producer was uh, Steven Spielberg, but it's Poltergeist. This one's definitely um, so, so many remem memorable scenes in this movie. Uh, it's uh, really scary. I, I, you know, I didn't, didn't love the sequels to this, but, but the original is so great. You know, when, when this was uh, re-released on 4K, I had to pick it up. You know, it's, it's one of my all-time favorites. It's a ghost story. and. Uh, but yeah, so many memorable scenes in this movie. I'd, but yeah, definitely Poltergeist. At number four, this one was another one that I saw at my aunt, aunt and uncle's back in the early 80s. This is like 19, 1981. I don't think we saw it until like 82. That's when HBO finally got it. Uh, usually they didn't get you know the, theatrical movies until like the year after. But the movie is American Werewolf in London. Um, this is a John Landis movie. Uh, really scary. It's, 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 it's a combination of, of horror and also comedy. Uh, Rick Baker was, you know, the, the seven-time Oscar winner. Did the uh, effects on this? You know, when the werewolf changed in the movie, he he uh, he did that, and they, the Oscars actually made a special special award for him just because because of his makeup effects. They thought it was so special, and it was something that that had never seen before. They had to make a, a special category for him. So, <laughs> but yeah, this is a definitely a, love love the uh, two Americans. What happens early in the movie? I could believe that, like, a, you know, as a at the time, I was eight years old, so just to see what happens there, like, wow, one of the, that happened uh, this early in the movie. But yeah, the, the, I, I love the original. I, I didn't like the sequel all that much, but I love the original. And number three, this one was uh, written by Stephen King and directed by Stanley Kubrick, and the movie is The Shining. This is, you know, Jack Nicholson there, and uh, Shelley Duvall is in the movie. Um, this is a scary movie. I mean, just that isolation kind of feeling inside of a hotel room. Or hotel building uh, with, with nobody else other than this family in the in the building, and you know, they find ghosts and stuff that are in the movie <laughs> that live that live in the in that uh, hotel um, in the, in the snow. I mean, it's just a horrible weather outside, and they're just that, that feeling of being trapped. It's uh, that's definitely a horror element that Stephen King's really good at. So, and he and Stephen King for for years didn't like what Stanley Kubrick did to his story, but. Still, I, I love this movie, so it <laughs> doesn't matter. You know, I think in recent years, I think Stephen King's kind of come around, and Dr. Sleep kind of showed that he's kind of embraced it a little bit more because he knows the fans really love it. And so he, I think he kind of feels like he's got to get, get on board with, with the, the original one, even though he, he hates what Stanley Kubrick did to the story. But yeah, so The Shining at number three. At number two, this is the one from John Carpenter. Uh, this is one that I usually watch every October, you know, but the movie is Halloween, the original 1978 version. This is, you know, uh, Jamie Lee Curtis is so great in this. Uh, it's basically what put her name on the map, even though her, her parents were, were famous already, but that's what kind of made her kind of stand out. And, and this, uh, I, I love this uh, Blu-ray because it has, shows that scene where um, Jamie Lee Curtis came to Indianapolis to do a uh, autograph signing at a convention. Uh, I think it was Horror Hound or Days, Days of the Dead. I think it was Horror Hound. But she, so great. I think it was on like a Saturday and, and Sunday, and she... She basically, it was on Sunday, and she had such a huge line of people there, and, and she didn't want to turn anybody away. So she, uh, you, you watch it on the feature ad on this, where she, she said, I'm going to take a little break and come back, and I'm going to, I'm going to sign every autograph and talk to every, every fan. I, I don't want to turn anybody away. And she doesn't do conventions very often, so I, maybe that's, that's part of it. It was part of a charity that she did and for like a Los Angeles, I think a hospital or something at the time. So that, that, that's really special. I think that's why fans really love Jamie Lee Curtis, because... You know, she really ever does. I, I think this may be the only convention she's ever done. So just to, to take the time to talk to every fan and sign every autograph means why that's the reason why she's so special. That's why we love Jamie Lee Curtis. So uh, number two, I've got the original Halloween. So at number one, I've got another one from John Carpenter. Uh, it's uh, The Thing. This one, uh, you know, it's uh, Rob Bottin did the, uh, the effects in it. He was really young. I think he was like 21 or 22 at the time. He was a... Uh, Apprentice of uh, Rick Baker, which I had you know, at, from American Werewolf in London. He he learned from Rick Baker and, and uh, 
this was his kind of first solo project. It was after his year after the Howling. This is in '82, so he had learned a lot from from the Howling, and uh, you know, Rick, I think at that that movie, Rick Baker set up all the makeup effects, and and then Rob Bottin came in and took over the project and made it pretty good. You know, he, his uh, werewolves in that movie are pretty good, but he. Uh, it was years later he won, I think, an Oscar for Total Recall. He did not win an Oscar for this one, surprisingly, but the, 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 you know, the effects in this, the creatures in this are so great. And you know, obviously, Kurt Russell's a legend. He's a you know, Snake Plissken. He did the you know, Escape from New York and Escape from L.A. So, and he's worked with John Carpenter five times. So uh, you know, this is one of the better ones. Uh, you know, uh, he did Elvis before, too. That, that was OK. But, but uh, you know, uh, most of the stuff he did with John Carpenter was really great, and they were a great team. So uh, I've got the thing at number one for sure. So uh, that's all I have for you tonight. Uh, please you know, subscribe to my channel. Please put a thumbs up on the video. That this uh, that helps with the YouTube algorithm. Helps uh, bring more people to, to my channel, and it kind of helps my channel grow. You know, maybe someday I can get a thousand subs and, and finally get monetized through YouTube because I, I don't make any money off YouTube right now. So I tell you, I I, I love doing this stuff. I. I I love that uh, Garrett invited me to, to do this, and he's going to put it on his uh, community tab, so hopefully everybody can see this video, and I, I, I can start watching everybody else's video too, because I, I didn't want to, you know, didn't want to get anybody else's ideas, you know, and I want to have my own nine movies, and, and then after I put this up on, on Garrett's channel, on my channel, on, on Garrett's channel, then I can watch uh, other people's videos and kind of get find out what, what they really loved and what they grew up with, because I'm, I'm 50 years old, so I, definitely my my uh, movies that I grew up on are going to be different than than people at different age groups, you know. But uh, these, uh, I think, it was, these are nine pretty good movies, though. So, but that's all I have for you tonight, and have a great one. Thank you.